Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about the period of a sine or cosine function. Now here's the easiest way I can describe a period. Let's say I have a sine graph. Let's say it looks like this, okay? And now let's give some values. Let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The easiest way I can describe the period it's the time it takes to reach the same point in the sine graph. So for instance, just pick a point that you see happen more than once, like this point and this point. If you measure the x distance between these two points, so we're starting at one, count one, two, three, four, the period is four. Now the cool thing about period is you can count from any two points. You can also count from these points down here. And this distance is the distance between 3 and 7, which you can do 7 minus 3, it's 4 again, and that's not a coincidence. If you measure from any two points, including this point here at the start and this point here when it starts going up again in the sine graph, that distance will also be 4. So it's very easy to find the period if I give you a graph because you just look at it and you tell me the distance between two points. Now there is a trickier scenario. What if I tell you this is my sine or cosine graph? Okay, let's say it looks like that. And as we know, sine and cosine graphs go on forever. So this is still gonna go on, but it's like off my graph. And the reason why that's important is because this time I'm gonna tell you this is pi over two, that's pi, that's three pi over two, and that's two pi. Now again, my question is going to be, what's the period? And the problem is, it never goes to the same point twice. You may be thinking, this point and this point is the same because they're both zero, but remember, they're not the same point in the graph because this point is going up, as you can see, it's starting to go up, and this point starts to go down. So it's not actually the same point. So we don't have a period here. But what we do have, we do have half a period. In other words, this distance from my one red dot to the other red dot is one half of a period. And we know that because if I just scroll up to the one I just drew, what we essentially have is just this portion of the graph right here, which is half of the whole period because the period goes on to right there. So we only have half a period, which means half a period equals two pi. So if you want a full period, then you just have to double it. The period is equal to four pi. And again, how did I figure that out? Well, I had half a period, which means if I want the full period, I double it. It's also possible they give you a quarter period. If they gave you a quarter period, it would look like this. This is one quarter period. And the reason why, again, is because you need to know what a full sine curve looks like. This is one full sine curve, this is one full cosine curve. So again, this is the sine, this is the cosine, this is what one quarter looks like for the sine right here, and this is what one quarter for the cosine looks like right there. And as you can see, this shape looks very similar to my quarter period for the sine, which means if I tell you this distance is six, like zero to six, then you know the whole period is six times four, which is 24. And that's all you have to do whenever you're given a graph. Now let's say you want to find period when you're given the equation. This is gonna look something like this. The function y equals the cosine of three x. This is a very easy example. All you need to do is you look at this number right there in front of the x. We typically call that b. And the period just follows the formula 2 pi over b. Again, b is the thing in front of the x. So in this example, the period is 2 pi over 3. And if I were to graph this, I know what a period of 2 pi over 3 looks like. So first it's cosine, so it starts up here and goes down like that. Here's the distance for one period because we get back to where we started. And that distance is 2 pi over 3 because that's what we said the period would be. And why was the period 2 pi over 3? Well, because this three here and this equation two pi over b here, when we plugged in b equals three, we get two pi over three. So let's look at another example. 
what if I have y equals the sine of x over 2? Well, this one's harder. The first thing I would do is I'd recommend you rewrite this as 1 half x, the sine of 1 half x, because that's a lot easier to see what you're supposed to do here, because now b is just 1 half, and you can plug in the formula period equals 2 pi divided by 1 half. Now, my recommendation to you is whenever you're dividing by complex fractions, multiply by the reciprocal. In other words, divided by 1 half just became times 2 over 1. That's what we do in math. So the answer for the period is 4 pi. And now let's look at one more example. Let's say f of x equals 2 sine of pi x plus 3. Now really, the 2 doesn't matter, the plus 3 doesn't matter. I mean it matters, just not for period. Because the 2 right there would be the amplitude, which is not what we're talking about. And plus 3 is the vertical shift, which is also not what I'm talking about right now. The only thing I care about is the pi x, specifically the pi, because that's what b is. So that means the period equals 2 pi over b, which is also pi. And whenever you have pi in the numerator and the denominator, they will cancel, and your period's just going to be 2. And that's how you solve period problems in sine and cosine graphs. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.